If you are a new startup or early stage small business owner or just run a simple business model, then it is likely you are using what is known as the cash-based accounting method. This is simply actual money in and out of your business bank account. However, in accounting, there is also an important concept called the accruals method, and it is something you should be aware of. In this video, we will cover as part of a story the following, an explanation of cash accounting, cash VAT accounting, what exactly is the accruals concept, what are the pros and cons of accrual accounting, and finally, is the accruals method better or worse for your tax bill? Sandy's Apps is a small freelance business run by Sandy who designs and creates smartphone apps for business clients. He currently runs the business as a self-employed sole trader on a full-time basis. Sandy is a solopreneur in the business and does everything himself, including designing and creating the apps. It takes about one month from the order being placed to delivering the completed app to his clients. From the start and in the early days of his business, Sandy simply used a cash basis on accounting. In fact, he didn't know any better and his understanding was that cash in was his income and cash out was due to any expenses and costs. On average, Sandy would sell a completed app for £5,000 and would raise an invoice to his client using his cloud-based accounting software. Once Sandy received the money into his business bank account from the client, he would merrily book the transaction as revenue in his business's income statement. He did a Google search to find out what it meant by cash accounting and found the following description. Cash accounting is an accounting method where invoice receipts are recorded during the period in which they are received and expenses are recorded in the period in which they are actually paid. It all seemed straightforward enough to Sandy. As the months flew by, Sandy's app started to grow rapidly. Orders were flowing in and soon enough Sandy could not keep up with everything himself. He realised he needed to expand and get help. So Sandy hired two specialist app developers to help him deliver his orders. And during this time, Sandy also decided to get an accounting and tax partner to help him better know his numbers so he could make informed decisions. In his first meeting with his newly appointed accountant, the accountant established that Sandy's app's revenue had hit £80,000 on a rolling 12-month basis by the end of June. Sandy's accountant advised him of his obligation to register the VAT should the business exceed the VAT registration threshold. As Sandy's apps were selling B2B, that is to businesses that are VAT registered themselves, it made sense for him to register for VAT. And his accountant duly did this for him. So Sandy's app started charging VAT at the standard rate of 20% and Sandy delightfully books the VAT in his accounting software on a cash basis. He is in effect using the cash accounting VAT scheme and once again Sandy does a Google search and finds the following description. With the cash accounting scheme you can pay VAT on your sales when your customers pay you, reclaim VAT on your purchases when you have paid your suppliers or VATable expenses. Once again, it all seemed quite straightforward to Sandy. He realised his business did not have to pay across VAT to HMRC until he received payment, including the 20% VAT from his clients, and likewise when he actually paid VAT on his expenses. And he understood the cash VAT accounting could only be used up to a limit of £150,000 revenue per annum. But something was not making sense to Sandy. Quite often, Sandy's clients took about 60 days or longer to pay Sandy. And at the same time, Sandy was paying his staff and all his expenses on no credit terms. So in other words, immediately as incurred. When Sandy was looking at his income statement for the month of June, it looked as though the business was not making any money, despite the fact that Sandy knew he had completed and delivered five apps in the month at £5,000 each plus VAT. So Sandy arranges a video call with his new trusted accountant and he asks him to explain what is going on. His accountant spotted the issue quickly and explained to Sandy that because his business is using the cash basis of accounting, any delays in the invoices paid from his clients will understate his revenue on the income statement in a particular period of time, in this case, June. And because Sandy is paying his expenses and suppliers as incurred, in other words, not on any credit terms, his expenses are not matching against his revenue. His accountant then suggested switching over to the accruals method of accounting, and that this method is quite common for growth businesses. This will solve the problem, stated the accountant. 
He also pointed out there was a revenue limit imposed by HMRC UK for using the cash basis of accounting that Sandy needed to be aware of. Sandy wanted to do some more of his own research, so he did a Google search and found the following description. The accruals concept states that income and expenditure are matched against each other in the period when they are incurred. This is sometimes called the matching concept. Using an accruals approach, income is included in the period when the right to receive it is earned. Sandy then asked his accountant to prepare his June income statement and balance sheet under both the cash spaces and accrual spaces. As we have already established, the business had sold and delivered five apps at £5,000 each plus VAT, providing a total income of £25,000 plus £5,000 of VAT in the month of June. Two clients paid up in June, a total of £10,000 plus VAT, and the other three did not pay until much later in August. Sandy's expenses amounted to £10,000 for the month of June, all on the cash basis. So the income statement under the cash basis in June looks like this. Revenue is stated as £10,000 and expenses as £10,000, so there is no profit or loss for the month under the cash basis of accounting. The accountant then presented the accruals method side by side and it revealed £25,000 of revenue and £10,000 of expenses showing a profit in the month of June of £15,000. Remember, the accruals method allows you to recognise revenue when the right to receive it has been earned exclaimed his accountant. As Sandy had completed and delivered all five apps in June, the business had effectively earned the revenue even though all the money had not yet been received. Sandy sighed with relief and finally understood the difference between the two methods. The accountant then presented an extract of the balance sheet as of the end of June, as also known as the Statement of Financial Position. The balance sheet essentially is a snapshot of the financial health of Sandy's apps at a point in time. Under the accruals method, there is an asset called accrued revenue. This represents the £15,000 of three clients who had not yet paid by the end of June recognised. Under the cash method, there is nothing at all. No recognition of this amount that is owed to Sandy's apps. The accountant went on to explain the difference is a timing difference and it seems simple enough now that as your business grows and you start selling more and more apps, the timing difference starts to amplify and can impact your cash flow and tax bill in any given period. The accountant went on to summarise that one of the advantages of the accruals method is that it shows a true and fair view of your business finances at a point in time. It also shows the full picture on his business's balance sheet and as his business starts to get more complex, for example, buying equipment and software, then concepts such as depreciation are fully accruals based. It also smooths out revenue and expenses, avoiding sharp spikes and troughs on a month on month basis. The accountant did admit that the accruals method was more complex than the cash method and that in its simplicity, the cash method was easier to understand and follow. He then concluded that the accruals method and the cash method eventually provide the same result over time. However, how long this period of time is depends on your business. For many businesses, it takes years to get to the same result. Sandy now understands the accruals concept better, but he wants to know whether the accruals method will be better or worse for his tax bill. As a sole trader, you pay income tax and class two and four national insurance on any profits your business generates. And don't forget, this is done once a year through a self-assessment tax return. And to answer this question, it really does depend. For example, if Sandy was using the cash base method and by the end of his financial year, let's say the 5th of April, his revenue was understated, then his profit would logically be lower than it should be reported and hence his tax and national insurance bill for that year would be lower than it should be. On the other hand, if he was using the accruals based method and his revenue was overstated for the year, then his profit would be overstated and so too would his tax and national insurance bill. So in conclusion, if your business is operating the cash basis of accountant, then it's worth having a chat with your accountant or doing your own research as to whether firstly you are required to switch to accruals-based accounting or if it is beneficial for your business to do so. I hope this video has helped you understand the key differences between cash and accruals accounting and why it could matter for you and your business and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this does really help us to get our content out there. This is Tony D'Angelo for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.